the tidy Sydney suburb of Middle Cove, you mightn't expect to find a productive food forest, but there's a lot going on in this garden. There's arrowroot, a nice alternative for potatoes. There's pigeon pea fixing nitrogen for the citrus. There's pepinos, there's rambling chocos, there's asparagus, there's even here a seven metre wall of monstera, the fruit salad plant. This is the home of Nita Lowe, a keen gardener who's been growing food now for just a couple of years. I bought some tools along to lend a bit of a hand. But first, let's go and meet Nita. It's a nice spot to get an overview of the garden up here, isn't it? Definitely, yeah, I love it up from up here. You get a good bird's eye view. So how much water does this part of the garden get? Uh, you'd be horrified, not much. Um, I basically just rely on nature. It's survival of the fittest in my garden, <laughs> the way I like it. <laughs> and what about up the top? Come on, I'll show you. A gardener after my own heart, Nita's making the most of what she's got. Repurposing items destined for landfill, she's built a productive paradise on a steep block. Welcome to upstairs. Yeah, wow. So this is my strawberry patch. So I rescue those from the streets. A lot of people throw these out. And yeah, the old made... barrows there. They're, they're yeah. like collectors. They look fantastic. And I put them here because um, when it rains, the water goes straight down from the balcony, straight where That's the strawberries perfect. are. That's perfect. That's exactly. perfect. Self-watering. Yeah. And are these just to protect it from the locals? Exactly. Heaps of people throw these oh, out. I'm they're on the street all the time. All the time. And they're the perfect And they make cage. a perfect crop cover. Um, and um, these too. Yes. I mean, the old bird cages. And they're going to last. They're going to last for years. Exactly, exactly. So I've got the annuals up here. Um, so I've built wicking beds just to save water. They pretty much look after themselves. Yeah, and I see you've got lots of compost bins. Yeah, because they're the magic. I, I love composting. So they, you know, they all go back into the annual beds. And here's my worm farm corner. Great to, great to meet the worms. Yeah, this is the engine of the garden. All of my kitchen waste and my family um, and I also takes home from um, my office all of rotten fruits and. So you're a scraps. real you're a real collector of, I of, am. of food scraps. I'm proud to say that I am a bit of a food collector. And what do you do with the the proceeds of the worm's work? Oh, I dilute it and spray it around. Fertilizer that you make your own. You don't have to buy. Now this bed here is a little bit different. It's right on the edge of the cliff. Yes. So I'm doing a bit of a trial um, here. Um, so this is a possum highway. So I've been trialling out different plants just to see what they don't eat. So I've got lemon verbena, lemongrass. I'm basically trialling out all the sort of pungent um, smelling plants. Um, they don't touch the um, spring onions. Yeah, lavender. Lavender. And it's, it's actually a, a really good little process to see what they do and don't eat. Exactly. It's, it's all about observing, um, you know, work with nature rather than fight it. <laughs> Possums aren't the only visitors to Nita's garden. Down in the food forest, another determined local decided Nita's banana crop was a very appealing prospect. So what were you trying to create with your banana circle? Um, well, I wanted to create a closed loop system down here. Um, so when I have um, various offcuts and whatnot, I don't want to throw it away. So instead I throw it in the middle of the banana circle breaks down, becomes nutrition for the bananas, and I get bananas on top. So. And I mean, it, it's really efficient and sustainable in that sense, that you're not carting it up to the top of the hill and putting it in a bin and getting it taken away. You're actually utilising every bit of, of green material and turning exactly. it back into produce. Exactly. Now, how has the, uh, the circle progressed? So I went away recently and um, just after I did a whole lot of mulching and I came home to a nice big mound that um, my local friendly bush turkey have created. Um, so it basically dug out everything that's in the banana circle, moved it here. Yes, yeah, so I tried everything, including throwing in the kitchen sink. <laughs> um, but no, but uh, one council suggested that, you know, if you do have a fresh mound um, in your garden, to put a tarp over it, just to deter um, the turkey from building it um, even bigger. Um, but obviously you can only do it at the beginning of their season when there's no egg in there. And that's um, fair enough. That's fair, yeah. Well, look, from a productivity point of view, because it's been allowed to become a thicket, there's too much competition for the nutrients and so what I think we need to do is remove the ones that have borne fruit 
thin the little suckers and just keep a few main trunks that will bear your fruit in the coming season. Sounds good. Now this is a pretty tricky little site here because there's so many different trees packed into the area on either side of the banana circle. This particular stem was the one that's already fruited. So that's the first one to go. And I just have to carefully fall it into this little wedge where there's no other plants. <laughs> Bloody beautiful, right where I wanted it. <laughs> I'm using a bush saw to chop the stem into sections. Then with a sharp spade, I'm removing the base. So with that out, this trunk here is our new leader and what we need is two followers. In this case, this one and that one will be our new suckers, but these two here have to go so we don't have so much competition. Limiting the growth of each banana plant to just three suckers will direct the plant's energy into producing really big fruit. Oh, there we go. Gardeners are a really friendly bunch, but banana cuttings are one plant you definitely shouldn't share. If you want to grow bananas like Nita, you must get your bananas from an approved grower of certified disease-free stock. Check banana growing guidelines with your state government authorities. And as for the offcuts, Need is removing them well away from the banana circle to prevent any disease and pests from breeding. They can be spread elsewhere in the garden and will break down nicely. Now, all the compost and mulch that the brush turkey flicked out is going back where it belongs in the banana circle. Well, my say, a big mound of mulch. <laughs> yeah, what a workout. <laughs> Can you believe that was from one turkey? <laughs> wow, they work hard. Determined little character. And finally, a seriously high-tech barrier to deter the bird from nesting near the bananas. Well, there you go, Nita. Your revamped banana circle. Yes, I know. And I love that you um, reused my kitchen sink. Look, I can see that you're a, a bit of a, a recycler. Have you thought of uh, catching water from the shower and bringing it down during the dry no, months? No, that's a great idea. Better get my um, biceps going and lift some water. 